So something really interesting happened this weekend that would have a direct impact on you, whether you're betting or trading on horse racing. And it also presented a range of opportunities, but only if you were alert enough to pick out exactly what those opportunities were. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. If you're interested in learning to use BetAngel, head on over to our website where you can download a free trial. If you're interested in learning how to use it, then head over to the BetAngel Academy where you can do exactly that. And if you want to talk to like-minded people, then head on over to our forum. So when you're actively betting or trading on horse racing, you're looking to find, when you're betting value and when you're trading, you're looking to get some clue as to where the price is going to go what it's likely to do. You're looking for precursors to that particular situation. And this weekend, we were presented with one of those opportunities. They're off. They race away and Shishkin is uh, reluctant to race. He stood still at the start. So we were treated this weekend to a very high quality race with very high quality horses. And one of them refused to race and it just happened to be the favorite, Shishkin. And um, the interesting thing about this is, you know, you can, it's a good reminder of why I'm fascinated by horse racing, because you can quantify all different aspects of it. You know, the influence of the trainer, the jockey, the form of the horse, all of these things. But at the end of the day, if the jockey tries to do something and the horse doesn't respond, then that's it, basically. And that's one of the great things about horse racing, why it's so variable, why it presents so many opportunities, because not only are you trying to discount all of those other factors into the market, you also have to account for the demeanor of the horse. Now there are all sorts of theories put into place as to why this particularly happened, but the fact is that it did. And I've said in some other videos that I always have this preference for looking for unusual opportunities. And I also, I'm not keen on backing at shorter prices because weird things can and do happen. And generally they're not discounted into the back end of the market. And this was another example of why that is particularly the case. So what do you think happens to the price um, of Shishkin. It was priced about 150 to 160 over the period running up to the start of this particular race. And of course, when it planted at the start, the price absolutely rocketed out. Um, within a few seconds of that start, and everybody seeing that the horse was planting at the start, um, it ended up at a the maximum odds of 1,000. So it basically went from sort of 150, 160 out to 1,000 within a few seconds. So let's examine sort of what impact that had on the market and why. So poor old Shiskin really didn't get an opportunity here uh, to show its full potential. And when it planted at the start, it never got a race at all. So a lot of bookmakers and sportsbook uh, decided to refund bets placed on the favourite in this particular race. Jolly good for them. But you've got to understand that this is really a bit of a PR and marketing exercise for them. They make plenty of money. Their overruns are pretty big anyway. And as a consequence, uh, they can afford to take that hit. But that doesn't happen on an exchange because bets are placed up front. There are many, many different backers, many, many different layers. The two get matched. And when something like this happens, you have to suck it, basically. It could be on either side of it. But I'll give you a few hints in a second as to how you could have been on the correct side of this. Uh, but as a consequence, that distorted many different things because, you know, when Shiskin um, was trading pre-off, it was about 150, 160. And then as we went into the actual race itself, then the price absolutely flew out because it had no chance of winning at that particular point. It traded at the maximum odds of 1000. And that had a hugely distorting impact on the Betfair SP because, of course, everything within the market has to revolve around this magical 100% book. And with the price of Shiskin flying out, the price and all of the others came in. And, and basically, when we add all of those together and we create the best Betfair SP, it ended up um, resolving it sort of, I think it was about 87% or something like that, which looks fantastic when you compare it over a long period of time. But this is why Betfair SP is fundamentally flawed, because the actual start of the race may not be when the SP is resolved. I think they should resolve SP at, at zero, rather than when the race starts, because very often, especially during the jump season, the difference between the start of the race and when the SP is struck is significantly different. So it gets horribly distorted at that particular point in time. And part of the reason for this, if I'm completely honest, is because people have access to technology like total performance data. And when we look at total performance data and you monitor it on most races, go ahead and do it yourself if you want to see what I'm talking about. 
The difference between them when the race actually starts and when Betfair suspend the market can be five or six seconds. So this is why you saw all of these volatility and the movement in odds before the race actually started. If we go down into it in a more granular level, I will bring up a chart for you. You can see over the period of seconds when this problem started to occur to when the race actually got underway, you can see how the odds started to move. And with a few seconds of in play, the price was at a thousand already. But the interesting thing about this is, you know, you could have ended up on either side of this, but there were a few clues as to what was likely to happen if we look at the footage a little bit closer. So when we look at a key difference between the flat and the jump season, when you get flat horses, they're loaded into stalls, they have to pass a stalls test, and when the gates fly open, they're trained to run as fast as they can. It doesn't always necessarily mean that they will, but if something refuses to race, it has to go back and do a stalls test. That doesn't happen in the jumps um, racing code. And there are, you know, you obviously have to have a horse that will start, but nonetheless, you do get a number of situations where that may not happen. And if we're looking at a horse that's priced at 50 or 100 to 1, and it's probably not a particularly great horse and it's exhibited problems before, then, you know, that's probably discounted into the price a little bit. And if it refuses to race, then necessarily the price will go. But of course, it could start. And if you've got a horse at a bigger price uh, that plays around a bit at the start, but then decides to start, um, there's not really much to be done there because that's sort of in the price. But when we get to much, much lower prices and Shiskin was basically priced at sort of 150 to 160, then that does present a bit of an opportunity because say we lay Shiskin based upon its behavior before the start of the race and then the race gets underway and it does decide to go, but is maybe a length or two behind the main pack the price will drift out. So you're basically throwing a bet in the market. And you know, let's say, uh, and, and we'll make things simple here, that it was priced at 150, which isn't far from its true price at the start of, or just before the start of this race. We could lay a thousand and okay, you know, we could potentially lose 500. But of course, remember we're trading. We're just gonna go into the market for a period of time and then we're gonna take that money back out. And if it started and was a bit slow and a few lengths behind some of its rivals, then necessarily the price would drift in play and you'd be able to nick a little bit of profit. Um, but of course, the big upside here was if it didn't actually race at all, which I don't think many people expected on Saturday, but the fact is it didn't. So for a relatively low risk, you've managed to get a lay through the market um, that had an almost instant payoff. And that was probably the biggest opportunity that we saw uh, this weekend. But of course, you know, there's no reason that because the other scenario could be that it refused to race and then it gets withdrawn. So why not back the second favorite on the on the fact that that price will absolutely come crashing in at that particular moment in time? So whichever way you look at it, there was an opportunity there. But one of the things that I do during the jump season is I'm looking for um, short priced favorites. I'm looking for how they behave because that could give me an opportunity right at the start of the race. So there are many aspects to this particular situation that occurred on Saturday, but they all presented lots of different opportunities. When we saw it not behaving correctly at the start, when it was, you know, you all of a sudden you can sort of think, well, it's probably worth a cheeky lay here, not on the basis that it's going to lose or that it will refuse to start, but on the basis that you could trade out a few ticks higher once the race gets underway. It's one of those things that is um, something that you can do during the jump season. Uh, and, and what I actually have is on my keyboard, I have loads of buttons lined up. So basically, I, when I see this happening on course, I just quickly check what the uh, number of the horse is and so on. And then I'm basically just one key press away from being able to initiate a trade on this particular race. But also, I'm going to throw in here for you total performance data. I have said it before, it's incredibly useful. And Ascot is a total performance data race course. So as soon as I could see Shiskin misbehaving at the start, I immediately turned my focus to the real-time tracking map to see what data was actually coming straight off of the course. And you could see clearly there that it had planted. And the interesting thing about total performance data is it's about five or six seconds ahead of live pictures. So you can have a look on course, you can see exactly what's happening there. You can make a decision about whether it's worth doing something, and then you can actually get smack bang millisecond up to the date data which will allow you to do something about it. And this is one of the ways that you can use a combination of different factors in order to be able to get a profitable trade. Now, I think most people thought that Shiskin actually would run, and I think most people would have had the intent 
of actively trading out at some particular point. But the fact is um, that when it planted at the start, all of a sudden, you know, the price went to a thousand and suddenly everybody had made a lot of money for very little effort over a very short period of time. It was one of those unexpected bonuses. But that also explains why the SP was so distorted on Betfair because necessarily people would have actively been laying it uh, just before the start and they probably would have accelerated that laying when they saw that it had actively planted. So some people would have gained, some would have lost out, but the fundamental reason for doing this video is I'm sort of saying to you, these sort of things occur all of the time during the jump season. Not quite as spectacular as we saw on Saturday, but nonetheless, there's an opportunity there if you wanna take it.